challenge you. Amen. Amen. Trouble won't last always. Amen. Amen. I think that we ought to have that same level of confidence in all of our seasons in our lives, no matter what has come up in our lives. Be confident in this, that trouble will not last always. Mm, dear Lord God, today we say thank you. Thank you, Lord, because truly trouble will not last always. We're grateful, God, because truly whatever we've dealt with, whatever we've been dealing with, will not last always. God, weeping may endure for a night, but we're promised joy in tomorrow's morning light. So, God, today we're going to keep our eyes fixed to the hills of which cometh our help. We're not going to look to the left or to the right where the trouble may be, may be around us, but we're going to keep looking up. We're going to look up to the author and the finisher of our faith, God. We're going to look up and remain steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the word of the Lord. We're going to look up, God, to you because whenever we look up, we can reach up. And when we can reach up, your hand reaches down and picks us right back up out of any trouble that we find ourselves in. So God, today we pray that as we look up to you, you look at us and reach for us, God. We pray that as we look up to you and reach out towards heaven, that heaven will reach out towards us. And so God, today I pray in this moment right now that you will confirm within somebody today that whatever they've experienced will not last always. That the trouble they've endured, the trouble that they've gone through, the trouble that they've, that they've, that they've, that they've had to live through will not last Last always. And so, God, in this moment right now, I pray that you will hide me behind your sacred cross. Speak through me, God. Preach through me, God, and use me in a mighty way. Hide me behind your sacred cross, and God, use me for your glory and for your benefit today. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Beloved, there is a word from the Lord on today. If you would turn with me in your Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 5. Beginning at verse number 8. 1 Peter chapter 5, beginning at verse number 8. One verse today, one verse today. 1 Peter chapter 5, beginning at verse number 8. The text declares these words. Be alert and of a sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, is like a roaring lion, prowling around, looking. Somebody say he's looking looking for someone to devour. Amen. Family, we're going to be doing a sermon series based upon our men's day theme. So we are talking we're talking about what it means to be men on the battlefield. This is also this is geared towards the men. The focus is towards the men, but I know for a fact this will guarantee everybody. This will benefit and bless everybody in the church today. So we want to focus on we want to focus on this men on the battlefield part 1 men on the battlefield part 1 You know Mr. Stan Wilson I I, I going through life I never understood the value of having a strong support system You know not in the sense of financial support but more along the lines of a group of people who are there for you, who are consistently there for you throughout all of the seasons of your life. You know, I always felt as if that I had to handle every problem on my own. I felt as if that whenever I would go through things or have to deal with stuff, that I was always on my own and I had to handle certain issues and struggles by myself. And sad to say, Coach Twine, that I got into this habit of even at times not considering myself man enough when I couldn't deal with my own problems by myself. So eventually, I got myself into a situation that I really couldn't get myself out of. I became burdened down with the weight of my problem. The weight of my problems began to crush my soul. Mr. Copeland, the heaviness of this burden began to bring me into a dark despair and I felt like there was no hope. I was drowning in this situation and what I did not realize was that when I finally opened up about what I was going through, there were actually a couple of brothers who knew exactly what, what I was dealing with and who could relate to me on a positive way. Not only that, 
but they actually became real brothers. I mean, real friends, real, real consistent people in my life who picked me up when I stumbled, who would, who told me to watch out and be alert when I was about to trip, and they were willing to teach me how to deal with life's pitfalls and life's problems. And on top of that, there were folks that I could call on to fight with me whenever I was going through the issues of my life. And family, isn't it great to know that when you are going through, there is a body of believers. There are some folk around you who can stand with you and stand for you. Family, it's great to know that there are some folk in our friend group, folk in our families, folk in our folk in our church who won't just stand up with you, but who will also stand for you. It's great to know that we can have some friends in here. It's great to know that we can have some cousins in here who will encourage us and fight with us when we are going through. Family, it's great to know that there are some folk out there who in the middle of your struggle, who will remind you, who will pull you aside, at times yank you aside if need be, and remind you that, baby, trouble won't last always, that every single thing is going to be all right, that this might be for the minor moment affliction, but there will be glory after this. It's great to know that we can have a support system, a family, a body of believers that will stand with us, stand for us, and fight with us what no matter what battlefield we find ourselves in in life that's what we find in our text today we find Peter talking to both younger saints and older saints within the church and in this letter he is teaching the older saints how to speak to the younger saints and teaching the younger saints how to speak to the older saints and it's within these writings that he gives out a warning that I believe applies to us no matter our age, stage, or gender here at New Mount Olive. Peter the text, y'all. Peter says these words. He says, be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Fellas, one of the things that we need to realize is that the devil is looking to attack us. The devil is looking to attack the men. The reason why the devil looks to attack men specifically is not that sisters don't have any value. Ladies, I understand you got some value, ladies. All my ladies say, I add value. Oh, y'all didn't say it like y'all was a diamond in the rough. Come on, ladies, say, I got value. Yeah, use a diva, like Beyonce says. You use a diva. I, I tried my best. I tried my best. I really did. I, I tried my best. It didn't. I'm not Beyonce, so I can't sing like Beyonce. I, it's, it's all good. But ladies, you do add value as well. But I want the fellas to understand also that men, the devil, just like the devil wants to attack our women, the devil also wants to attack our men as well. The men, the devil is looking to attack us because it knows that if it can break the men, then he can break the family in our communities. The devil knows that if it can destroy the men, then the devil can destroy the church. The devil knows that if it can destroy the men in our communities, it can destroy all of our communities at its core foundation. And men understand this, that we are on the battlefield. And as men on the battlefield, we've got to stick together because the devil is seeking to destroy us left and right. If you don't believe me, just turn on the news. Because all good, we have to contend with police brutality and political systems that are that are that seek that seek and do not mean us us well. We've had to deal with policies that have been that have been put in place by people who only see our value by what we can produce for them versus who we are as a person. And that right there is enough to destroy you. That right there is enough to bring you down. That right there is enough to bring you to a state of hopelessness and despair. Spare. But that's not the only thing we have to deal with. Men are having to deal with loneliness, isolation, mental health issues, joblessness, pressures from a job that don't that they don't make enough money on that job, pressures from their family, pressures with life dealing with unrealistic expectations, too many expectations, and the list can go on and on and on and on. All my brothers say amen. And all of these things, fellas, can destroy us. 
All of these things can bring us down. All of these things are enough to make us want to holler and throw up both of our hands. And the devil uses all these things to remain busy. Somebody say busy. Oh, yes, the devil's busy. The devil sure enough is on the prowl. The devil is not stationary in our lives. No, the devil moves. And while the devil is moving, the devil is roaring. Now, Sister Kamiko Brown, I've never heard a lion's roar before, and I'm thank God that I haven't, I'll tell you right now. <laughs> but some experts say that a lion's roar can be heard as far as one mile away. That's, that's a long way, that's a long ways away. Then on top of that, not only is the lion roaring, but the lion is prowling around you. So imagine that there is a lion that is prowling around you and roaring. And church, that's scary. Because when a lion is prowling, you don't hear its footsteps. The lion is moving sneakily. When the lion is prowling, you don't hear it coming. You may hear the lion, but you won't see the lion coming. The lion's movements are restless, but stealthy, restless, but cautious, and that is dangerous. It's dangerous because you can hear the hungry lion, but you don't know where it's coming from. You don't know whether that lion is coming or whether it's going. And as a matter of fact, can I be real with us? Some of us in here today, not just the men, but all of us in here today, we may be hearing some physical roars. We may not be, we may not hear physical roars of the lion, but we do hear the, the roar, metaphorical roars of a lion in our lives. What you talking about, Pastor? I'm talking about we hear roars of injustice in our communities because we don't know whether it'll be our father, our brothers, our sisters, or our sons, or our daughters will be devoured. Next, we can hear the roar of statistics because we don't know if it'll be our children, our aunties, our uncles, our nieces, or our nephews, or our friend groups yet. We can hear the roars coming in from each and every direction, and we don't know when, we don't know where, and we don't know how the lion will strike. Some of us are living like that right now. No, you don't hear an actual roar. But you hear the roar of not enough money. No, you don't hear an actual lion's roar, but you do hear the roar of insecurity and self-doubt. No, you don't hear an actual lion's roar, but you do hear the roar of dysfunction in your families. And it seems as if the roars are getting louder and louder and louder. You can't tell if the roars are coming from the east or the west, from the north or the south. As a matter of fact, it became hard for you to even believe like the choir saying that trouble won't last always because all you hear in the back of your mind is the roar of the lion telling you that trouble is still going to be on the way when you leave these four walls and you're trying to figure out and deal with how am I supposed to move forward when there's a lion roaring and prowling around you listen I know and understand and you are hearing these roars I know and understand that these roars are putting pressure on you to run and respond. But instead of doing that, the text teaches us to be alert. Somebody say, be alert. Don't be scared. Be alert. Don't be afraid, but be alert. Don't be fearful, but be alert. Men, we must be alert. We must be alert. Here's the reason why, fellas, because we bring hope to our homes and our communities. Here's how I know when the slaves were brought over to America, the slave master would take the biggest and strongest male slave and beat them almost to death. That's the sanctified version I can tell you. I can't tell you what they really would do to almost death. But the reason why the slave master would do this is because he knew that the black man gave hope to all the women and the children in the communities. And if he could break the black man, then the slave master could break the hope in the community. And that's what the devil wants to do. He wants to destroy the hope that the black man brings and destroy the hope that the black man 
man has and destroy the and by destroying the hope that the black man brings and the hope that the black man has then they can destroy the black man and the community in general so men understand this don't you ever don't you ever look at your lives and look at yourselves and think that you are insignificant because if you were insignificant if you as a man did not add value to this life then there would not be so many different things that would try to crush you in this life I know, I know, I understand that there, there are talks about what it means to be a high value man. I know and I understand there have been podcasts telling us as men that we ought to have a high net worth and we ought to be doing this and we ought to be doing that. I understand as men that it can feel as if that you are not worth anything or that the only worth that you had is found in how many commas that you see in your paycheck. I understand that men that you only see and, and see, your, see the value in yourself or see the value in your lives when you when you can when you when you when you only associate the the, the 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 worth in your life to how much your check is worth when you bring it to the bank account but let me tell you this that no matter what happens in your life if you don't hear nobody tell you this before hear me tell it to you now fellas that your life adds value i got one amen from i got one amen men you are valuable you you add value. You, 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 no matter what you do for a living, you hold value in this earth. No matter what, no matter what size check you bring home, you have value in this earth. No matter how great or no matter how small your job is, you add value to this community and to this worth. No matter what position you hold in this world, you add value. You are valuable. All my fellas say, I'm valuable. If you didn't add value, men, folk wouldn't be so pressed to try to kill you. If you didn't add value, then folk wouldn't be so pressed to try to box you into either being an athlete or an entertainer. If you didn't add value, then your family wouldn't depend on you the way the family depends on you. Men, you have value. All my brothers say, I got value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are valuable with everything about you. You are valuable. You add value. Your life adds value. That's why the devil wants to destroy you because it knows just how valuable you really are. That's why life puts so much pressure on you and because you add value to this world and if you ever got a glimpse, if you ever got a hold of how much value that you have in this world, oh, you will shine brighter than a diamond. He would be the diamond in the rough. You would take a piece of coal and turn that coal into, in, into a diamond. You would be like a rock and take that rock and turn that rock into a ruby. Oh, my brother say, I've got value. As a matter of fact, let me give you a McNugget for your dipping sauce. Don't you ever be afraid of life's pressures. Because diamonds are only formed from intense pressures in life. The most valuable diamonds can only be formed by millions of years of consistent pressure from the earth's crust. And so, yes, I know what you've been dealing with is hard. But, brothers, when you come out of this, I'll stop by to tell you that you're going to shine like pure gold. You've got value. Somebody say, I got value. Now, I don't know about you, but if I know that I'm on the battlefield and a lion is on the battlefield, too, I'm going to take some preventative measures to secure my victory. Mr. Peterson, I'm not going to show up to fight a lion in a shirt and some jeans. I'm not going to show up to fight a crocodile in my Crocs. I'm not going to show up to defeat the enemy with, 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 with just my bare hands. I'm not, I'm not going to show up to fight a bear with just my hands. No, I'm going to come prepared with something. I'm going to make sure that I have something to protect me and something to defend myself against the line. I got to make sure I got something to play offense and defense with. Because the best ways to protect ourselves from the attack of the devil is to protect our mind. Somebody say protect your mind. <laughs> Fellas, we must be sober-minded. Because there are, and there are a lot of things that can intoxicate our minds. Anger can intoxicate our minds. 
Jealousy can intoxicate our minds. Impure thoughts can intoxicate our minds. Toxic masculinity can intoxicate our minds. Entitlement can intoxicate our minds. Privilege can intoxicate our minds. And the list can go on and on. And here in the text, Peter is urging us to have a clear mind so that we can do one, one, one main thing. Make good, clear, sound decisions. So, Pastor, how can I have a clear mind? Well, one of the best ways to have a clear mind is by avoiding things that would distort your thinking and impede your judgment. This means that you must not entertain thoughts that are not of God. You got to gird up your mind. Not only you have to gird up your mind, I told you you got to play offense and defense. You got to be alert. Somebody say be alert. I know we must be a sober mind, but we also must make sure that we stand firm and be alert in our faith. And as men, we have to make sure that we stand firm. We must stand firmly in our faith and stand firmly on what we believe. We can't be men that are shaky or wishy-washy. We can't be men that are weak-minded and weak-bodied and easily pushed from one side to the other in our faith and in our belief system. We've got to have a reason to stand firm. And, and what you're standing, you don't just stand firm on something. Thing. But fellas, we are standing firm in something because the reason why we got to stand in our faith is because when you are sinking down into life's pressures, the good news is that you're going to be sinking into your faith when life seeks to sink you down. When you are sinking down in the waters of despair, the good news is you'll be sinking into your faith. And no matter what happens, your faith gives you a solid rock to sink in and to stand on. And so we must make sure that we stand firm in our faith. Somebody say stand firm. Yeah, yeah, you got to stand firm in your faith. Don't be indecisive about who you are and whose you are in Jesus Christ. You want to stand firm in your faith. That means you got to know something about yourself as a man. You got to know the kind of man that you are. You've got to know the kind of things that, that, that you bring value into this world. You've got to know the kind of truth that God says about you in this world. You've got to stand firm. Stand firm in your beliefs. Stand firm in your morals. Stand firm, fellas, in your character stand firm in your in your in your ethics and stand firm in your faith somebody stay stand firm and that's how the enemy fights you you stand in your faith because the enemy fights you at at your faith cuz the enemy won't take won't fight you for your car he won't fight you for your job, and they won't fight you for your house. Because the devil can't do nothing with those things anyway. But the devil can attack you in your faith so that when you do lose the car, you lose your faith. Or so that when you do lose your house, you lose your faith. Or so that when you do lose your family, you lose your faith. Men, I stop by to tell you that it's your faith that the devil is after. Don't believe me? Check it. That's what happened to J. Iris' daughter. When J. Iris came to Jesus about his daughter, y'all remember that story, don't you? In case you didn't remember, let me give you a little flashback to make you understand something. J. Iris went to Jesus begging and pleading for his daughter's healing. And on the way, J. Iris gets a message that says that his daughter has already died. Had J. Iris not stood firm in his faith, he would have sat up there and believed the wit believe what the witnesses have said. Had he not stood firm in his faith, his daughter would not have gotten the miracle that she needed. Had he not stood firm in his faith, his daughter would not have been alive to testify about the goodness of the Lord and in the land of the living, but because J. Iris stood with Jesus, just because J. Iris stuck with Jesus, even in the midst of devastating news, even in the midst of earth-shattering news, even in the midst of life of life's quaking news, Jesus looked at J. Iris and said to him, Don't be afraid, but only believe. And because J. Iris stood in his belief, because he stood in his faith, his daughter was healed. And I wonder what. What man am I talking to that has faith like that? I'm wondering what woman am I talking to that has faith like that? I wonder what father am I talking to that has faith like that? I wonder what mother am I talking to that has faith like that? The kind of faith to believe when everything
everyone else has told you to let it all go? What parent am I talking to that still believes the best in their child even though their child has written them off? Yes, I know your child is in the streets. Yes, I know your child made some bad decisions but only, only if you believe. What parent am I talking to? What uncle am I talking to? What auntie am I talking to that still believes the best in your child, your niece or your nephew even though they may not be doing the right thing even though you've been calling on the name of the Lord Sunday after Sunday, week after week, month after month, year after year and they still have not seen a, a real change in their lives. What parent am I talking to that still believes that God can and that God God will sustain their child's life if only you would believe your community needs your faith your family needs your faith your church needs your faith we got to stand firm in our faith so as we look further in our text Peter says that we resist the devil standing firm in our faith because we know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of suffering. This means that in your suffering, you ain't the only one. Let me say this again. You ain't the only one in your suffering. Say it one more time. You are not the only one in your suffering. Again, you know as a man, I used to think, that when I was a young man, I'm still a young man, but when I was younger than what I am today, <laughs> I used to think that I used to think that the mark of manhood was a man that could handle every problem on their own. But you know, we have a real tendency as men to make you think that we did it ourselves. We got a real good tendency as men to make you think and believe. That it was our own good deeds, our own good character, our own good, our own goodness, our own good decisions that helped us get it out the mud, that helped us make it through, and that helped us make things happen. I'm not discrediting any man that has worked hard in their lives, but I'll stop by to tell you this. No one man is an island. Everybody's got to lean on somebody. I don't care that I don't care how I don't care what kind of man what, what, how great of a man you are how many accomplishments that you've made everybody needs somebody Jesus needed the 12 Moses needed Aaron David needed Jonathan we all need somebody so I start by to let us know this that men you are not alone you are not alone even in the midst of hearing all the roars from the line in different directions, you are still not alone. The financial lines you may be facing, fellas, somebody else has dealt with that before. Those insecurities that you might be hearing roaring in your face, someone else has dealt with that before. And as a matter of fact, not only did somebody else deal with it, but somebody else came out on top of it. Whatever lion you might be going through, have hope because not only are not only not only are you not alone in this, but there is somebody out there, some brother, some sister, some uncle, some auntie, some daddy, some mother that has faced what you've been dealing with and has come out before. You ask me how I know? I know because the family of believers throughout the whole entire your world is going through the same kinds of suffering so you ain't by yourself even if you tried to be by yourself you ain't in this alone even if you tried to be alone because you are connected to each and every person in this church by the blood of Jesus Christ because each and every one of us is blood related by the blood of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that means that you are in a group that's consistent of believers that is covered by the blood you are in a group that's consistent of believers that's covered by something that can reach way down to the lowest of valleys. Uh, they can always reach way up uh, to the highest of mountains. Uh, it's you're connected to a body of believers uh, that's always covered, uh, covered in something that will always give us the strength we need uh, to keep going and to keep fighting on. Uh, that's why I'm so glad. Uh, that are connected to some believers huh, that are connected by the blood huh, because there's power huh, power huh, 
wonder, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. And because we're connected to the blood of Jesus, because we are connected as a body of believers by the blood of Jesus, whenever, whenever I face my lions, I can be confident because I'm not alone. I've got a blood, a blood family member who knows and understands what I'm going through. I've got a blood, a blood family member that can testify and say that trouble, trouble won't last always. I'm so glad that I serve a God that will never never leave me alone church I'm so glad that I serve a God that gave me a family to help me fight life's lions I'm so glad that I serve a God that never that never left me alone because God didn't leave me alone when I was sinking deep in sin far from the peaceful shore there is safely steeped within seeking to rise no more but the master of the seas heard my disparaging cry and from the waters he lifted me didn't leave me there but he lifted me didn't tell me to stay there but he lifted me didn't tell me to pick myself up from my bootstraps but he lifted me and now safe safe am I and I seen the lightning flashing I've heard the thunder rolling I felt uh, since breakers dashing, uh, trying uh, to conquer my soul. Uh, but that's when, uh, that's when I heard uh, a voice from Jesus uh, telling me uh, and reminding me uh, that I'm never alone. Uh, no, uh, never alone. Uh, no, uh, never alone. Uh, he promised uh, promise never never to leave me never never to leave me alone and if you're glad in the house today that God never leaves you hanging if you're glad in the house today that you're connected to somebody that can help you out if you're glad in the house today that you're connected by blood to a savior and to a brother or to a sister and this body of believers and you want to give God some praise because no matter no matter what I go through no matter no matter what I've been through no matter no matter what I will go through God will God will never never leave me alone and the good news is that some glad some glad morning when this life is over that Jesus won't die alone that Jesus uh, won't be raised alone, uh, but when he gets up, uh, everybody else uh, will get up too. Uh, when Jesus uh, calls us all home, uh, we're all uh, being home together with Jesus, uh, and that's the victory of it all. Huh? The victory is uh, that even if uh, it seems like uh, I'm alone, uh, I'm raised up uh, from my dead of affliction, uh, and raised up uh, victorious uh, with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, if you know it, say yes. Say yes. Amen. Come on, stand up all over the church, everybody. Thank you for worshiping with us here at New Mount Olive AME Church, where we are a loving and living church serving a loving and living God. Listen, family, with all the hell that you've experienced this week, you want to share some heaven on your timeline and share this worship service on all of your social media platforms. Don't stop right there, though, but head on over to our YouTube page and like, 
share, subscribe, and hit that notification button so you don't miss any of our great content. Listen, family, we post content each and every Wednesday and Sunday. On Wednesday, we post our Bible study at both noonday and at 7 p.m. You can join us via all of our virtual platforms, or you can join us in person at noonday and at 7 p.m. Also, you don't want to miss to join us on Sunday School at 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. each and every single Sunday. And check it out. Don't just stop with Sunday School, but you can join us for in-person and virtual worship here at New Mount Olive AME Church beginning at 11 a.m. Listen, family, I pray that you all have experienced something wonderful on this worship service. If you've been touched by this worship service, share it with somebody on your timeline. And remember, family, I love you, but God loves you more. Take it easy. Have a great day and an even better week. Goodbye, family.